What is going on everybody? Welcome to the fourth finance with Python using Quantopian and Zipline tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the inclusion of fundamental data. So fundamental data is fundamentally different than what most people are doing any sort of uh, algorithmic trading on for the most part. So most people, when they do algorithmic trading, they're mainly using quant data. So they're looking in terms, and actually I would even say automated trading. I would say most hand, most traders trade on really simple stuff like moving average crossovers or the moving average convergence, divergence, the MACD, the RSI is pretty popular, these kinds of things. But these things are almost inherently biased right out of the gate because they're derived from historical prices. And that's the whole point. The idea is that, well, we can use historical patterns to predict future patterns. Statistically, we know that is a, a fallacy, uh, but people do it in trading. And, and, and actually, it can be a somewhat um, decent strategy with trading, I suppose. Uh, you can have success, uh, but it's it's just inherently flawed, especially if that's all you're using is these quant values. But people still do it and people do make a lot of money. But then you have fundamental information. So so quant is basically all based in patterns and, um, and stock price only. It doesn't take into account anything to do with the actual company itself. Whereas if you use fundamental data, uh, what fundamental data is, is it's basically it's values that pertain directly to the company and what really should be used in the valuation of a company. So these are things like, you know, price to book uh, ratio or price to earnings. These sorts of things are, you know, the current price of the company as compared to its assets and, and things like this that actually matter or historical growth and, and this kind of stuff in the actual company rather than just purely the stock price. And historically, though, getting your hands on fundamental data and a programming fashion is kind of difficult. Uh, but it can be done, and if you have been following along on my channel, when we did the Scikit-Learn tutorial series, we used fundamental data there, and we trained a classifier based on only using fundamental data to classify companies as either buy or sell, and that actually turned out to be really successful, and um, you'd probably be one of the few people that's actually using a program to, to use fundamental data, and that's part of the idea is how to get an edge, so you've got to be doing something else that the majority of people aren't actually doing. So anyways, with Quantopian, we can incorporate fundamental data. They use a company called Morningstar, and you can query basically their uh, database of fundamental information, and they have a ton of metrics. Uh, so just to reference that really quick, this is the uh, Quantopian API, so you can go, or I mean, uh, their documentation. So you can go to quantopian.com, then go to help, and then help an API docs. And uh, what we're looking for is fundamental data. So that's right here. Uh, so we'll click on that. And here you go. You've got all this stuff. It's got uh, data on over 8,000 companies and over 670 metrics per company. A lot of the metrics I've never even heard of. Uh, and I'm not really sure what the value is. But that's a lot of metrics. And we could actually later on incorporate machine learning on those metrics uh, if you wanted. Uh, SK Learn is actually uh, a part of Quantopian. So anyways, you could click on here for the fundamentals reference page, and this has basically all of the fundamentals you can use. You can see the scroll bar. It's massive. I mean, just tons of stuff that we can reference. So the easiest way to figure it out, at least so that I've, I've found thus far, is generally to reference fundamentals. Then you'll do like these titles are like the dot, and you do asset classification, then dot this. Uh, I'm just saying that because for some reason they, I don't know, the documentation here is kind of iffy. If y'all are watching again, Quantopian, uh, whenever I'm typing it in, they've got like, um, I forget what it's called. It's, you know, autocomplete basically. And a lot of times it doesn't pick up stuff, even though it exists. Like you can do it, it won't pick it up. And I'll show you guys that as we go through it. But anyway, just want to show it to you guys. So if you're looking for, let's say you want to find like price uh, to, let's do price underscore to book. No. Uh, let's go book. Let's see if we can find like the book. I'm hoping to find just because I know they have priced a book, but it's really hard. And this is a great example of how you can actually find um, value, find what you're looking for. So tangible book value. I really thought that I could do price book. Let's try. Wow, what have I done? Price book, and then let's do ratio maybe. No. How about PBR? No. Oh, here we go. PB ratio. Okay. So anyway, it exists. 
it's just like really difficult to find what you're looking for. And since they have as many metrics as they do, uh, figuring or finding what you want, it's just a little impractical to like, I don't know, read through the entire documentation of all the metrics. So anyways, I wish they would improve that, but anyway, this is what we've got. So coming over to our script now, let's actually uh, make this happen. So again, initialize, this is what runs once on the script's loading. Although uh, if you do trade live, initialize is run once a day. So keep that in mind, um, just so you know. So this will be, we'll start with context.limit and we're gonna say the limit is equal to 10. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a new method that we haven't really covered yet. And that's gonna be before trading start. So this method is um, exactly what it sounds like. Before the day of trading begins, this method will be run. And we're gonna use this to update what's called our universe. And our universe is the stocks that we're willing to trade. So initially when we say context.stocks and initialize, and we say the stocks that we're willing to trade is just, just Apple, let's say. That's our universe. Our entire stock universe is Apple. Uh, we can pick a lot of stocks and that would be our universe. The maximum amount of stocks you can have with Quantopian is 255. So moving right along, we're going to have our uh, define before underscore trading underscore start and we pass context through it. Now, uh, the way that context or I mean the, the fundamentals is going to work is it uses uh, SQ Alchemy. So you can write an SQ Alchemy query and it will query their database uh, with that. So for example, what we could say is we could make a new, we could say uh, context.fundamentals, so we're just writing something here, uh, equals, and then we use get underscore, uh, and there's even our choice, fundamentals. So get fundamentals, and you'll notice that when I clicked that, it just like filled it in for me, like it just it created the query for me. Thanks, that is great, I love that. So and here you can see basically all your options. You've got a query, so a basic SQL can be query that we could write, a filter, you can filter down everything, order by, if you want to order it, you know, you say you want to order by market cap, you could order by market cap or something like that. Uh, and then limit right now is set to a hundred. We'll leave a hundred. That's totally fine. Um, or actually let's we can use our context.limit. So let's copy that paste. Uh, and again, the maximum you can even do is 255. Uh, at least that's the amount of stocks in your universe that's possible. So the most you can put there is 255. So let's say we want to query and let's use PB ratio, for example. Okay, so uh, this will be our query and we're going to say we want to query fundamentals dot and then valuation underscore ratios. It did not find that for me. And then uh, good, that's what I want. Oops, fundamentals dot valuation underscore ratios. See, it didn't find it, so it didn't let me use it very annoying anyway then dot and then again it's not finding pb ratio why it's not finding that i really don't know uh, but we can come over to quantopian help and again here we see pb ratio so let's find the heading that pb ratio is under there you go the heading is valuation ratios so that's how i knew it was valuation dot under or i mean valuation underscore ratios I just knew that because of how it's documented here. Again, I really wish they would document it some other way, uh, but that's what we that's what we got right now, so that's okay. Um, so fundamentals evaluation. So that's going to give us the price to book ratio for everything. And heck, let's go ahead and get the PE ratios too. So it's price to earnings. So fundamentals dot val. And again, it's not. It's driving me nuts. So you can see here. Okay, so you've got valuation ratios. I'm just going to try to see if I can find it. So what if we did, I just want to see if I can get PE ratio. No. How about price to? No. How about, again, PE? No. So again, I'm not really sure why uh, they have it the way they do. Um, but anyway, ratios.pe underscore ratio. If I'm doing something obviously wrong, I'd love to know why it's acting like that to me, but it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, anyway, fundamentals. So here we're querying for the price to book ratio and then the price to earnings ratio. So we're getting that information on every company. So we need to start filtering. So what if we want to filter based on uh, price to earnings? Generally, what people want is a price to earnings 
uh, around 12. Anything uh, higher than 12 is generally a little overpriced maybe. Under 12 is maybe a little underpriced, but again, it's gonna vary significantly uh, based on mainly growth though. So if, if, if the company is projected to grow significantly in the next few years, price to earnings might actually be quite high, okay? So um, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut the video here and then we'll continue in the next one with the filter and the order by limit. And then we'll probably be able to actually run this uh, and actually back test our, our script here. So that's what we'll be doing in the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that and thanks for watching.